as you may know from this sunday 28th of january 2024 i am going to start a new course that is panchak i have taught this course to i think uh, for 3 uh, 4 years earlier also now 2024 batch of this course is going to start from this sunday if a person wants to learn vedic astrology in the traditional way i'm not saying that you practice as a professional astrologer or not but if you want to learn astrology in a traditional way you should start from panchang this is the norm first of all panchang is taught and then anything else is taught in this 15 class course i am going to deal with panchang in depth in the first five classes only there will be general introduction of panchang and how to use it in horoscopy normal principles and remaining 10 classes will be completely my own researches which will revolutionize the way you look at horoscopes and you look at panchang the importance of panchang is what we will talk about in today's class today's video but one thing is there that is you see when a traditional horoscope is made by any traditional priest in the first page there will be panchang the problem today is that people don't pay much attention to panchang any astrologer will directly jump to rashi chart navams chart will see the shantar dasha and will try to predict this is the particular reason why we fail in our predictions or the predictions are not up to the mark this is the basic reason anyone who have learned traditionally will not do such mistakes they will go in the proper order first starting with panchang and then dealing with other planets this panchang basically we think is comprising of tithi var nakshatra yog and karan only but not only this much multiple other things are there in panchang as well so though people generally learn only five things in panchang only the calculation part of it i will be teaching some 15 things related to panchang and multiple uses of it so you may know how to calculate tithi but do you know how to use tithi in predictions i have made multiple videos on my youtube channel that you can see and more new content and new researches going to teach in the course so see one thing is there in when we are looking at a horoscope talking of a result sometimes you will see that people with same combinations are more successful as compared to someone who is having the same combinations but not so successful why it is so it is because of panchang sometimes you say people despite having a bad horoscope enjoy a lot sometimes people despite having a good horoscope can suffer in life also all of these things are due to panchang only the defects and problems one may have from birth cannot be analyzed without the help of panchang some results are forever there for example rich people like mukesh ambani and others they are born rich they remain rich their dashas and tardashas keep on changing but the riches is constant why it is so it is because of panchang some people achieve something and it sustains throughout the life why this happens it happens because of panchang some horoscopes are so bad that it is told that such horoscopes should not be consulted and if the native have such children then he should not do much to these children as they will destroy their life only so this particular thing that someone is unsuccessful despite being born in a good family or someone is not serious about their life all of these flaws come from panchang one thing is very clear that if panchang is bad one will not enjoy life to the 100% one will not enjoy his life fully this is to be understood the importance of panchang is immense for example i will tell you a small 
few tips regarding panchan see the first and the foremost thing one should understand whether you are born in shukla paksh or you are born in krishna paksh so if the moon is with sun after the degrees of sun up to the seventh house from sun exact degree of sun in seventh house from sun up to exact degree of sun in seventh house from sun the person is generally born in shukla paksh if the moon is between seventh house of sun to the twelfth house of sun the native is born in krishna paksh now if the native is born in shukla paksh what happens that this native is having good nature behavior character as in the native thinks well of everyone native wants to do good with everyone and you see native is having a decent nature decent quality native is liked by many loved by many this person can easily get their work done through their goodness virtue and all of these things these people you will see they are much attached with their family they deal with everyone with love and care and they don't want to hurt anyone even by mistake they are so much worried about these things on the other hand people born in krishna paksh you will generally see i am not saying that they are bad people but their way of presenting things can be harsh their language can be harsh they can be detached and most importantly generally people who are born in krishna paksh you see that they generally get they generally become victim of hatred and all of these things even their own family members don't understand them well right family members may not support and these people can have tendencies of fighting with their own family members fighting with their well wishers also so keeping this particular thing in mind in any regard if you come to know that the person is born in shukla paksh you will know that the person will be famous and loved now depending on the horoscope even in the worst case this person is famous in his family he is loved by his family members supported by his family members bare minimum to this result with just a normal strength of lagna lord some people you will see lagna lord is in exaltation but they are not that famous as compared to someone who is having just lagna lord in kendras but they are more famous the difference is shukla paksh birth panchang factors what happen with panchang factors that little support from panchang and little support from birth chart will make a great horoscope right so for this particular reason the analysis of panchang is very important i have told often times that the horoscope is influences over time panchang is the quality of time if the quality of time is not good then no matter how strong the influences are over the time the result is not going to happen well sun in the ascendant can produce good result also bad result also sun in the ascendant is influence over time the quality of time is good or bad sun in ascendant will be good or bad that is to be decided as per the panchang that is the basic point on the other hand i was saying that if a person is born in krishna paksh then the person can be hated by people he will be victim of demarcation generally they don't have good relationships in life and for any person born in krishna paksh you can easily predict that some level of dissatisfaction in almost every relationship will be there their relationship with their mother father siblings spouse is not very cordial as such and in normal case in shukla paksh born person you can see sixth lord Seventh Lord going into six eight twelve houses. Third Lord going into six eight twelve houses, being debilitated, etc. Still, they may have good relationship with their siblings because they are loved by all. But Krishna Paksh born natives with the same combination will have more strained and difficult relationships. Right. This is just a single tip, which will tell you how you know the native is perceived in the society. and what type of result he can expect in life talking in the same lines see one more thing is there 
you it is like the the calculation of the t is the distance between sun and moon tithis start from shukla pratipada and the last tithi is amavasya so 14 tithis of shukla paksh plus purnima then 14 tithis of krishna paksh then amavasya makes total of tithis i have talked before that tithi talks about blessings and if the tithi lord is powerful one can be very fortunate because tithi indicates blessings getting married having good children earning money this is dependent on tithi i will very simply tell you a point that you should remember if any person you see you check horoscope you see the tithi the native is born in if the native is born in the first tithi the sixth tithi and the 11th tithi and this native is also having a strong venus in their horoscope then this person will be very successful blessings will be there good life partner good obedient children gain of money getting good job status these things will be there to be blessed in life to have right things at right point of time to meet right people at right point of time to cash right opportunity at right point of time people born in dutiya people born on saptami and people born on dwadashi should have a strong mercury in horoscope people born on tritiya ashtami and triyodashi should have a strong mars in horoscope people born in chaturthi navmi and chaturdashi should have a strong saturn in aurus and people born on panchami dashmi amavasya purnima should have a strong jupiter in aurus born in this tithi if this planet is powerful then it is very certain that native will live a blessed life native may not have children only in the case when he is not wanting to have children if he is wanting to have children then either today or tomorrow the native will have child maybe he will have to perform remedies maybe he will have to consult doctors but if he seriously wants then he will have child for sure these are the combination for blessings more or less whatever is desired by the native either today or tomorrow on time or with a little bit of delay things will be fulfilled for sure so this you can check in your in your horoscope the person is as such that he will be told by people of society that the native is successful he have achieved all these things that a common person can desire of right so to see the success quotient we have to keep this particular thing in mind on the other hand if the inimical planet is very powerful you say the person is born in first sixth or 11th tithi pratipada shashti or ekadashi and in a stead of venus jupiter is more powerful then you will generally see the person will be disturbed in life calamities will be there one thing or other thing will be problem marital life is good profession is having problem profession is good children is having problem children wife are good family members mother father are into problem some or other type of problem will always be there born in dutiya saptami or dwadashi tithi and if the mars is powerful then it indicates troubled life one or other issue is always there born in tritiya ashtami or triyodashi tithi third eighth and 13th tithi and if somehow mercury is powerful life is troubled not only powerful yeah not powerful the life is troubled mars should be powerful for success but if mercury is more powerful than mars then life is troubled person born on chaturthi navmi or chaturdashi if sun is very powerful then life is troubled person born on panchami dashmi purnima amavasya if somehow venus is very powerful then the life is troubled jupiter should be more powerful as compared to venus otherwise life will be troubled 
these are advanced concepts generally it is taken that amavasya birth is bad purnima birth is good this is a general consideration only based on the strength of these two sets of planet first set being strong giving success to native second set being strong giving problems to the native this analysis should be done and only after properly analyzing these two set of planets one should predict result right of success or calamities at certain life only then the predictions will be good one more thing related to tithi that i have seen to be working very very greatly you see everything be it a profession or be it anything it take qualities for example you say spirituality someone wants to pursue spirituality now if a person have you know many a times what happens like people become spiritual in 30s late 30s 40s 50s and then as they take spiritual steps they find that they have already committed some mistakes or before that cannot be undone you see swami vivekanand it does not matter when he met ramkrishna paramhans or when he became serious about spirituality but the thing was he was celibate up to that extent many people quite early in their life can go into relationships and do mistakes which can, which will permanently damage their scope of spiritual upliftment throughout the life right some mistakes you can do unknowingly i am not saying that this person cannot pursue spirituality as such they can and they can be quite successful into it also but talking of the level of success there are levels into it right a person who is spiritual also celibate right from the childhood is another level a person who is spiritual do not celibate but is spiritual to the best of his level is second best and a person who is spiritual but they are having other vices also greed jealousy and all of these things they only are they are having only merit of being spiritual only it is not of best quality so this is just an example you can apply it to marriage also for example you say you love your life partner life partner loves you also you care for each other best quality of marriage second best quality of marriage is you love your life partner life partner takes care of you understands the responsibility it is middle level of marriage third level of marriage is you don't like your life partner you are just living in marriage life partner also is just living in marriage for the sake of family or anything as such this is worst type of marriage you take profession that you are everyone will engage into some or other type of profession now you are doing your profession you love it you enjoy it the work you are doing is making impact on the society also best type the work you are doing is making impact on the society making the lives of the people easier though you are not enjoying it but it is serving its purpose is middle type of work the lowest type of work is that you are working but you are not happy with the work neither the work is very important as such but because you have to earn money sustain yourself earn a livelihood you will have to work so anything you are talking about things have quality right this is seen with respect to the kendras of sun so basic point is like the application of panchang principles in horoscope should it be done yes it should be done if the moon is in kendras to sun moon is with sun fourth to sun seventh to sun tenth to sun it is told that person is a person of low quality so luck fortune riches good qualities of the native is minimum quantity if the moon is in panfar to sun second house fifth house eighth house eleventh house these things are in middle qualities mixed qualities and a good nature good behavior good character satisfaction which is etc is in middle qualities and if the moon is in third sixth ninth or twelfth house from sun then these things are available in best quality 
Now, what I will tell you that just take quality. For example, someone is have so there are two type of things. For example, taking our first example of spirituality, everything will not, everyone will not be spiritual. So if a person is having a combination for spirituality, what is combination for spirituality? Powerful planet in ninth house, ninth lord is powerful, lagna lord in fifth house or ninth house, fifth lord in ninth house or lagna or ninth lord in fifth house or ascendant. This is combination of spirituality. Now, whatever combination is being made, I am not saying combination for asceticism. I am saying combination for spirituality. Combination for asceticism is another thing. Now, this combination of spirituality, the planet who is making combination, if it is in Kendras to 14710 from Sun, this spirituality is of lowest level. Person is pursuing spirituality because he wants to, though he is not free of greed, lust, anger, etc. But at least he is pursuing spirituality because combination is there, he will pursue. If the combination making planet is in 2nd, 5th, 8th and 11th house from sun, then it is in middle, call, middle, middle quantities. Person is pursuing spirituality. Though he is not having very bad vices of anger, greed, lust, etc. But sometimes he can suffer from these issues also that he tries to control. But these are weaknesses, though not always disturbing him, but these weaknesses are there. On the other hand, if the spirituality combination making planet goes to 3rd, 6th, ninth, or 12th house from sun, in that particular scenario, person is pursuing spirituality in the best of his capacity. And as he progresses in his path, as he progresses in his practice, all these thoughts of greed, lust, anger, etc. will subside and person will be the best type of spiritualist who have control over their senses and all of these things as well. This was what is not available to everyone, right? Something which is occasional because talking of spirituality, only few people will pursue it. Not everyone will do. Now talking of things like marriage and profession, almost everyone will have some type of profession. They will do something to earn their livelihood. Or like, you know, almost everyone will have some relationship or will get married. Right? Accepting a few cases that as exceptions are every time there. So for marriage, you have to take the seventh Lord and Venus both. For profession, you have to take 10th Lord, the significator for profession being Mercury. That Mercury you will have to take. I will give more importance to house lord as compared to the significator but if sun itself becomes the house lord because you are looking at the position from sun then you will have to check lord of that house from sun for example if sun becomes the 10th house lord then because you cannot take the sun you have to take 10th lord from sun if the 10th lord from sun is sun itself then you take the significator right now, if the seventh lord or tenth lord is in one four seven ten kendras to sun, though one is married or one is having a profession, but this profession or marriage is of lowest quality. The person is working just to make a livelihood. He does not like the work, neither the work is impacting the society. In case of marriage, the marriage is just sustaining for the sake of family and all of these other things. Right. And, and at any given point of time, a little bit of, you know, flame is needed and it will be very explosive. Right. If the house lord is in 2, 5, 8, 11 from the sun, then in that particular scenario, in the case of profession, if the person does not like his profession, then the profession is impactful to the society. If the person likes his profession, then it is not impactful. It is not much impactful to the society. In the case of marriage, one partner is very loving, caring, and another partner also tries to love and care, but cannot selflessly love like the first partner. Whereas if the 10th Lord or 7th Lord goes in, Apoklimas from Sun, 3rd house, 6th house, ninth house, or 12th house, then the thing marriage and profession is of best quality. In this way, the result should be analyzed. Now the same principle should be applied in 
Tasha Antar Tasha also and the application of the same principle in Tasha Antar Tasha I have seen is very brilliant. For example, if a planet is going through the dasha of any planet, you say, except for sun, sun have some special considerations, right? If you are going to analyze the dasha of sun, sun will always be in Kendra to sun. So in that scenario, you will have to check the position of sun from the ascendant. In that scenario, you take ascendant at the place of sun. Right, for sun, you check ascendant. Now the dasha lord, if the dasha lord is in Kendra to sun, now, any result the Shah Lord may be indicating, but the good result is not 100% felt if the planet is in Kendra to Sun. Right? The good result at max can be felt 50% only. You say that the Dasha is of 11th Lord who is powerful. It is supposed to give gains, awards, accolades, owners, etc. If it is in Kendra to Sun, it will be of middle quality. Person can be awarded, but award will not be the highest award. It will be compensation award type only. Or if the person is getting awarded, some blemish is also coming with that award. In the same manner, regarding other houses, if the Dasha Lord is going into 2nd, 5th, 8th or 11th house from sun, then only 75% good result should be expected. And only when the Dasha Lord is in 3rd, 6th, 9th or 12th from sun, 100% good result of the Dasha should be expected. The same should also be applied from the position of natal sun to transit. Right, Transiting planet in suppose a planet is transiting in 7th house. It will give 100% good result related to 7th house only when it is falling in 3rd, 6th, 9th and 12th from sun. Now the position of sun is almost permanent. So you have to check the position of sun when the transit happened. For an example, you say hey, right now, any planet is going to transit. Rahu is going to transit. So according to our system, the Panchang, etc., that we are using, Rahu is currently there in Pisces, and he should transit to Aquarius on twenty fifth May. 2025. Take this example at 6.43 a.m. At this point of time, what is happening? Rahu is in Kendra to Sun, 10th house to Sun. So whatever good result this Rahu is promising in your horoscope, that result will be 50% only, not more than that. So the Modification to the rule is that when you apply it to the transit, you check the position of planet with respect to sun on the day of transit. This is the basic thing that you do. Recently, if you say recently, Rahu have transited in this Rashi on 11th of October 2023, Rahu have entered into Pisces. At that point of time, also it was in Kendra to Sun. So whatever good result that Rahu's transit in Pisces is giving you, that can only be realized 50%, not more than that. So the same principle, according to me, should be used in transit, Dasha, house analysis also. The basic theme is that whatever enjoyment, whatever blessing, whatever good things, whatever good qualities one is going to have, whether that will be available in full or not. If it is available in full only, then it is good, otherwise not. One more thing I have earlier also made the a video on how to use Panchang for matchmaking. As I told you, Panchang can be used for everything. First of all, if you are reading a horoscope without reading Panchang, you are committing a sin. You are committing a mistake. Point one. 
traditionally speaking if one is an traditional astrologer if one have learned in a traditional way they should start with looking at panchang only then they should make predictions for making predictions of every type and every kind panchang is very useful if you don't use panchang in making predictions there will be problems for example you say someone is having seventh lord in 12th house you predict very bad results for marriage right but you come to find that person is born in shukla paksh you see that your predictions will not be realized completely there will be some or other problems in the prediction for example in one case where seventh lord is going into 12th house one will predict that there will be separation from life partner seventh lord in 12th house generally there is separation from life partner now if the person is born in shukla paksh there is separation from life partner but the person gets married again also in the second marriage as well there can be separation from life partner but that will be temporary only not permanent on the other hand seventh lord is going into 12th house person is born in krishna paksh there will be separation from life partner and generally it will be permanent in this particular scenario if divorce happens then the first divorce and the second marriage will also take time after the first divorce second marriage will also take a lot of time and generally for the at least 50% part or for the maximum part of life person will have to live separated from their spouse that is very certain so you see though you are making predictions from permutations and combinations of the horoscope only but to which extent you should take the result that you will have to decide as per panchang for this particular reason without analyzing panchang properly making prediction is mistake in this way this to i have just explained how the panchang will help you make better predictions analyze it better another technique related to kendras from sun i have also given you not only this panchang is also useful in making predictions for example if we have to find whether the life partner is beneficial for us or not you remember i talked about something in the starting regarding blessings right for the first 6th and 11th tithi venus is the lord so if you are born in first 6th or 11th tithi and in the horoscope of life partner or horoscope of child or horoscope of mother or father venus is powerful then this mother father child or spouse is fortunate for you listening to their advice will give you more gains happiness etc in life native born in second 7th or 12th tithi whoever person have powerful mercury in their horoscope that person is very fortunate for you person born in 3rd 8th and 13th tithi any person having powerful mars in their horoscope is beneficial for you but by beneficial i also mean that cordial relationships will be there any person born in 4th 9th or 14th tithi other any person having strong saturn in their horoscope very beneficial for you people born in 5th 10th tithi or purnima or amavasya getting connected with people who have a strong jupiter in their horoscope is very beneficial for you getting married to such a life partner will make sure that after marriage there is sustenance after marriage you flourish after marriage you succeed in life so you see in match making also in advising things related to person the knowledge from panchang can be used very very beneficially in fact in timing events specifically timing events up to day timing event up to hours timing event up to minutes there is immense role of panchang until and unless you analyze panchang properly you cannot analyze the proper result of dasha how to analyze the result of dasha just one thing i have told you in you know with kendras to sun in that particular thing i have also told you how to use naksh how to use transits and dashas with respect to this particular technique you see this technique that i have taught you 15 classes one class is around 2 hours how much time it took me to tell this particular thing so like you know like this one technique that i have shared with you in this particular video is 1 by 150 
right? Like around 150 techniques I am going to teach. This is just one technique that I have told you. So just you can take the idea regarding how much I will be teaching, right? Because what I am presenting in videos, what I am presenting in YouTube is not even one hundredth of what is being given in courses right there. I have just told to, uh, you know, like emphasize the importance of Panchang and how importantly it can be used and how many ways it can be used. In making predictions, assessing the level of impact, specifically in timing events, and most importantly, in deciding whether the person is whether the person is successful or not, Panchang is very, very important. Any person who wishes to learn astrology, the way it should be learned should start from Panchang. Or if you have already started, then should know about Panchang for sure. The course starting from Sunday, 28th of January 2024. And if you're interested in learning about Panchang, learning astrology, practicing astrology, the way it should be done, you should. Thank you.